everyone. Welcome to Garden Mess. Today's video, I'm going to be trimming up a, it's a, a white um, iceberg rose. It's over here in the back of my yard. It's not really doing very well where it's located. Actually, I have two of them and in both places, they're not doing well. So I'm going to move it out of that location, go put it in kind of a shady spot, let it recuperate because we're gonna be having like 100 degree weather, but I need to get it out of that space. It looks terrible and I don't want it to die. So I'm gonna put it in the shade where it can recuperate. Um, but anyway, I've got to trim up a lot of the branches and then use my spade to help get it up out of the ground. So not my spade, but my shovel. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. Um, I've already been out working in the yard now for a couple hours. Uh, just cleaning up, organizing, and uh, getting my plants situated that I haven't planted yet. I've got a lot, and I use my patio back here because it is good shade. I use it for storing all my plants, so it always looks a mess until I can get all these plants in the ground, and then I'll get it all cleaned and organized again. But anyway, um, I did. I put a lot of my containers that I've been saving. Uh, I've been taking them to uh, my local nursery and letting them recycle them and use them again. They're typically the black pots. Um, sometimes I'll take the uh, proven winter pots to them because it saves them money from having to pay for the pots from proven winters, I guess, I'm not sure. But I, I, I don't know what they do with them actually. I just drop them off to them and uh, they said that they would recycle pots that I drop off. I don't know about the proven winter ones. They may not be able to use those, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, I do drop off my pots to them so they can reuse them. And um, I was collecting them over here in a pile and so that was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and messier looking. So I finally got those all cleaned and organized and put over uh, to put into the back of my car. So I'll be taking those to them next week because today's Saturday, they're closed on Sundays. So I'll take them on Monday or Tuesday. Anyway, let me show you where this iceberg rose is. It does actually have a few blooms on it um, but you know, normally I would say, oh, a little bloom, but then another one will pop up and then I'll never get it done. So, so there's my patio where I just was and the iceberg rose is right there in front of me. Now I have a container, well, you can't see it from here, but next to that, next to that blue container for the, with the maple, with the maple in it, I have a gray pot. Took the butterfly bush out of that one. And so I have it over there against that fence. It'll get some sun, it just won't get a lot. And that's where I'm gonna put this iceberg rose. It'll be protected from a lot of the sprinkler spray. It'll get a little bit, but not a lot. So it should be okay as far as the foliage goes. And I filled it up with some soil, a halfway. Well, yeah, a little less than halfway. I know that this is pretty sunny and I do apologize. In fact, I'm going to try to move the camera into the shade. That way it doesn't overheat, which can happen very quickly these days. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna start um, trimming some of the limbs or branches. You may or may not see me in the full frame all the time, but just know that's what I'm doing. Roots can develop. 
Alright, stay back there like that. I'll be right back with some soil. Stay. Don't flop. Don't flop. Alright. I've got some biotone. I'm going to put down here. And I already severed the root, so it's, uh, there's no going back to that. All right, and I've got some soil. about that I was zoomed way in you probably didn't see much of anything so there it is I do need to come like I said and keep uh, trimming it up I don't want it having to you know keep all that green foliage alive so I'm gonna come and trim it down but now that it's in the pot boy it sure is a lot higher than it was when it was in the ground it's like tall as that maple tree now all right let me go get some water it rained last night actually it stormed yesterday Well, I mean, it's definitely lopsided. More growth on this side than on that side, but you know, not much I can do about that. I can keep trimming it, but that's just the way it was in the ground. So it'll probably take on a new shape afterwards. I got some of the foliage off, not a lot, but there's a lot of roots there. Uh, they just weren't very long. So I think it should be okay. Anyway, I'll do an update in the next couple weeks and just show you how good it's doing. And while we're talking about updates, let's go take a look at that hydrangea that I pulled out of the ground. If you remember seeing that video, I had this little honey hydrangea and it's a panicle hydrangea oak leaf variety, panicle. Um, and then I have another one right here and it's not looking so good and kind of, well, it's not as bad as the other one, the third one was that I dug up, but I had a third one that was right here in this little area where I have all those clippings. And I had to pull it up because it was wilted. I couldn't get it to be unwilted. I wasn't too sure what was going on with it. And I was really worried it was going to die. And I really love them. They turn pretty color in the uh, fall and winter before they lose their leaves. And then when they bud their leaves out, they're pretty too. So I pulled it up and I put it in a pot just like I did this rose that we just did, that iceberg rose. And there it is, right there. Let's see if I can get over there without causing too much damage. A little on the crooked side. That's where I got the water to water that rose my rainwater. I've got to collect it now and put it into my rain barrel. So here's the oak leaf hydrangea and you see it is no longer wilted. It is doing much better although it does have that coloring that splotchy coloring and I really I don't know if that's what it's supposed to do because it does turn red rust like a rusty red in the fall. Uh, so it could be that it just has a coloration to it um, it also could be the moisture, it could be the humidity, it could be uh, spots, because I do have, well, I don't, but my neighbors have some uh, red tip photinia, or photina, 
forget if it, how it's spelled, but it's an I bend or just an A. And that thing has always got spots on it and has sickly leaves that drop into my yard. And I pick them up, but um, you know, it's just not a successful venture. So I do get a lot of black spot or spot on my that fungus on my leaves of a lot of things my hydrangeas and so that could be what this is and if I zoom in maybe you can see the leaves a little better uh, it does get good watering over here too it is in the shade it probably is well protected from the wind but I mean I feel a breeze right now so and if you look at these hosta blooms they were just moving in the wind so I do believe that the breeze gets back here so I don't think it's water sitting on the leaves the leaves look dry um, even with the sprinkler right here on the very end edge of the frame even with that sprinkler I still feel like you know it's it's not causing an issue now it could just be that the rain splashes the spores off of those sickly botinia leaves and then it gets on my my plants but anyway but it doesn't I mean they're fine they, they don't always look the best, but they're okay. And it's protected from the hot sun back here. So I, I think it's doing much better. I thought it had died. So I'm very pleased right now with it. It's to my rose bush here, my iceberg rose. That way it lives and survives. And we can all celebrate and rejoice together when we see it blooming in its fullness. That'll be so nice, right? And and my husband is going to love the fact i don't even think i showed you he didn't like this rose because he said it just congested the area so much so now you have all this space right here and it's nice and open so i'll be able to plant something but keep it smaller but before i do that all that liripe gone it's gonna be out of there all right, for real this time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a blessed day. And don't forget, subscribe and hit like. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. That's the face of a hot, hot day. Ah. So, after I dug up a rose bush and transplanted it into a pot and put it in the shade. I went out and started removing a lot of liriope from where it was. Let me show you what I did. As you know, I've been removing two types of grass from my yard. I've been removing the grass around the borders, the St. Augustine and sometimes Bermuda. Um, but I've also been removing this liriope, also known as monkey grass. Here's my pile so far. And all that has just come out that one little space right there. And they're just hundreds of little plants and they're all, their roots are all connected. So it's kind of tough to get them out. But as you see, it is 2.30 in the afternoon and I've been out here in the full sun this entire time. So I need to go inside. Even if I don't feel tired, I need to go inside and just take a break and get out of the sun because it can be very deceiving. The amount of electrolytes that you lose quickly versus how fast you can get them back into your body. You don't want to take a risk. So I'm going to go inside now, but I just want to show you what I had been working on.